Today we will discuss spark optimization techniques day to day life which we will use in our projects. So let's get started. So the first technique is use data frames or data sets over RDD. So for spark jobs right we will prefer using data set or data frames over RDD as data set and data frames include several optimization modules to improve the performance of the spark workloads because it for data frames or data sets right we have tungsten and catalytic op optimizers in the background run so spark rdd is building block of spark programming even when we use the data frames or data sets spark internally uses rdd to execute operations or queries but the efficient and optimized way by analyzing your query and creating the execution plan for tungsten and catalyst okay so basically the background when we try to frame a data frame or data sets right now we do have inbuilt tungsten and catalyst optimizers so that will analyze in a four stages so that will yields the optimal query plan to execute okay and uh, we don't have those optimization built-in techniques in rdd so let's say why rdd is slow Using RDD directly leads to the performance issue as Spark doesn't know how to apply the optimization technique and RDD serialize and deserialize the data when it distributes across a cluster. It means to say repartition and shuffling is the best example. Serialization and deserialization are very expensive operations for Spark applications or any distributed systems. Most of our time is spent only on serialization of data rather than executing the operations. Hence try to avoid the RDD. So though as discussed like though we don't have optimization things in build what it happens so this will try to do the serialization and deserialization so this is an expensive operation this is what we got it from the other days right okay now let's see another thing why data frames is faster data frames API does two things that helps to do this first it will use the off heap stories for the data in binary format second thing is generating encoder code on the fly to work with this binary format for your specific objects Though Spark or PySpark data frame internally stores the data in binary, there is no need of serialization deserialization data when it distributes across the cluster. Hence, we would see the performance improvement. Okay, so let's see a basic info of tungsten. So either data frames or data sets includes a project tungsten which optimizes Spark job for memory and CPU efficiency. So this tungsten, right, this main focus, it, it will it helps internally like, you know, it will increase the uh, efficiently to run uh, throughout memory and uh, CPU efficiency. So we'll say a bit catalyst, how that works basically, in which area that get improved. Catalyst optimizer is the place where Spark tends to improve the speed of our code execution by logically improving. Catalyst optimizer can perform refactoring complex queries and decides the order of our query execution by creating a rule-based and code-based optimization. Okay, so this is what uh, Catalyst will does and Tungsten will does internally. Okay, that's the first technique. And uh, the second technique we will use. Uh, Colis, we will use the colis over repartition and why we will see. So when we want to reduce the number of partitions, generally we will prefer colis as it's an optimized uh, improved version of repartition where the movement of data across the partitions is lower using the colis which ideally performs better when we're dealing with bigger data sets. So I have taken a, a sample a parallelized collection here if you look at it right. Uh, so after creating the parallel range I have taken 0 to 25 and uh, 6 partitions for example if it exits then I am collecting so this is how the range 0 to 25 has uh, distributed in under 6 partitions okay how much time it has taken 4 seconds okay 4 seconds it has taken let's see here I am doing the same uh, parallel connection RDD I am just trying to do the repartition Two, three okay six to three so now if I try to collect right see this is how it was uh, distributed in the under three partitions and it this has taken 0 0.01 seconds so I am what I am trying to do here I am trying to see practically like uh, when we apply colleagues and when I apply a repartition how much time consumption it is taking and uh, what it does internally so let's see when I do this when I, this uh, 
yields output repartition 3 as the repartition redistributes the data from all the partitions which is full shuffle leading to very expensive operation when dealing with billions and trillions of data let's see when when we do repartition right it will try to shuffle the data so in order before uh, in collecting the data it will shuffle shuffle operation is very costly expensive right so and that's why uh, if a simple example i have taken just a small uh, six partition small data right so then this one is itself taken 0.71 and the same thing uh, i am using the collage for the same data already now if i try to do the collage right it has taken 0.45 seconds see the difference repartition for seven ones for the same already i have implemented a reducer using collage 0.45 only it has taken if it is larger data sets like it's billions and trillions of data definitely we can able to see the better performance when it comes to repartition so now we can able to see that right? repartition collage is a faster when it comes to over repartition okay so this is all the difference about the collage and repartition guys this is the second uh, technique that we can use it so now the third one if we discuss map partitions over a map okay so the map partition so spark map transformation applies a function to each row in a data frame or data set and returns a new transformer data set map returns one row for every row as an input data frame for example if you have 100 rows in a data frame after applying the function map returns with exactly 100 rows one to one uh, alignment map so map partition uh, spark map partitions provides a facility to do heavy initializations for example database connection once for each partition instead of and yeah, every data frame row this helps the performance of the job when you are dealing with heavy weighted initialization or large data sets so uh, when we try to connect the database connections and we're fetching the heavy initialization stress when we run it so by the time uh, so rather than uh, scanning each and every row so uh, like you know partitions wise uh, it will try to combine it so in that sense actually the map partitions will be the optimal performance we can say now the fourth technique is serialization serialization plays an important role in the performance of any distributed application and we know that by default spark uses java serializer on the jvm platform instead of java serializer spark can also use the another serial called cairo the cairo serializer gives a better performance as compared to the java serializer why because cairo serializer is in a compact binary format and offers approximately 10 times faster as it compared to the java serialization to set the Cairo serializer as part of the Spark job, we need to set a configuration property, which is as shown the below. So we need to set the conf dot set Spark serializer. Is this this property? We need to set it. Okay, under the conf. So the Cairo serialization is compact for the binary format. So the internally uh, that is how it's basically the Cairo serialization is faster when it turns to the uh, Java serialization. So the another technique is called fifth technique is cache and persist. So Spark provides uh, its own caching mechanism. So we have to cache and persist. Cache is always on memory by default and persist uh, uses memory and disk both. Okay. Uh, so uh, Spark provides its own caching uh, like like you know persist and cache as we discussed right. Store the data into the memory whenever it is required. Where you we have small data set and the data is being used multiple times in our program. So added it at cache. It always store the data in the memory. If we apply added at persist, then some part of the data stored in the memory and some part of the data stored in the disk. Okay. So because uh, so when we try to write the file right uh, at the initial time after reading, we will try to do the either cache or persist. It depends upon the volume of the data. So then if you are using cache, then uh, all the data will be stored under uh, cache. If you are using persist under the storage levels, it will be stored as uh, memory under disk. Okay. So below are the advantages of using cache and persist cost cost efficient. Spark computations are very expensive when reusing the computations are used to save the cost. Time efficient reusing repeated computation saves a lot of time. Execution time is save ex execution time of the job when we perform more jobs on the same cluster. So this will definitely helps a lot when we try to rerun the same computation and again and again. So when we try to write or when we do any type of operations on top of that, right? So it will don't do computation and again and again. It once it does and it stores in the intermittent memory and it can fetches. So that's how the performance will be gained. So then another technique is called file format selection. 
So Spark supports many formats such as as, discussed, as shown CSV, JSON, XML, Parquet, OAC, Avro, etc. So Spark jobs can be optimized by choosing Parquet file with snappy compression which gives the highest performance and the best analysis. Parquet file is native to Spark which carries the metadata along with its footer. So for example, let's write the CSV data to a PySpark data frame and write it out in the Parquet format. Okay. So yes, as shown here, right? So just uh, Spark session has taken, and I am trying to write that. And uh, here I have taken some small data set CSV file. It's a students, and I am trying to write that uh, header. And uh, here, what I am doing, uh, uh, I am writing it to Parquet. Okay. So under temp, uh, this is a students. I am trying to uh, write into this particular location okay now let's see here see spark uses snappy compression in algorithm for parquet file by default so for spark native is uh, okay for spark parquet is a native for spark okay and it will be very much faster as well as if we don't specify even uh, the compression by default snappy compression will be taken this is an example so i didn't mention any compression right if you look at it here so it has taken by default snappy compression success uh, it will be stored under like this parquet uh, part file now what i am trying to do here the same location which is stored as a parquet right i have taken that temp and that particular thing directly file location it has taken and uh, i am trying to uh, read as a data frame in order to see the data so this is how we can do so if you look at it here temp the same path which we write and write if we give it we try to read it it should read okay then it will be the successfully stored okay so this is how the uh, file format so the best file format and the compression will be the faster we can say now broadcast variable. another technique is broadcast variable broadcast variable are read only shared variables that are cached and available on all nodes in a cluster in order to access or use by the task instead of sending the data along with every task spark distributes broadcast variables to the machine using efficient broadcast algorithm to reduce the communication cost let's see how does spark broadcaster works spark breaks the job into stages that have distributed shuffling and actions are executed within the stage large stages are also broken into task spark broadcasts the common data needed by the task within each stage the broadcaster data is cached in serialized format and deserialized before executing each task so in these uh, stages the broadcast works basically now let's see how to create broadcast variable the spark broadcast is created using the broadcast variable within the parenthesis variable that of spark context class this method takes the argument variable that you want to broadcast okay spark by default the size of the broadcast table is 10 mb guys by default the maximum size of the broadcast table will be 8 gb it should not be beyond that so now we'll see spark broadcast some sample uh, uh, you know list i am taking it or did i am creating so id name gender marks which i am taking okay now let's see here what i am trying to do i am creating a small dict in a form of rdd and i am trying to uh, map those values into my rdd okay so let's see in practical okay so this is the screenshot which i am showing i have written under the data bricks okay if i run this see id name gender marks i have taken now i want to apply the broadcast for this okay so till here it is created data frame right so now i am taking here a dict okay so dictionary I am restoring as it already and I am doing broadcast because this is lesser right less than 10 MB right now after the how to access the value broadcast dot value this denotion we have to use in order to for example key I am taking right mail it will display like that okay now rdd equal to df dot though this is uh, rdd right so I am data frame I am uh, 
accessing as rdd df dot rdd if you tell right uh, data frame will be converted into rdd and uh, now i want to add basically like uh, i want to map this m whatever i have taken right male means m female means f i taken i want to update m means m a l email f means female as shown in the below okay that's the reason i am broadcasting this small already and then i am df frame rewriting as a rdd and the mapping okay i am accessing um, and then i am collecting now uh, after that now what i am doing for the rdd i am uh, taking uh, the uh, column values id name gender marks because here we have only taken um, the values we don't see any columns right so now i am taking so we can do this way also like um, column names right id name gender we can store into under variable and then we can call it or else we can directly uh, incorporate uh, after tar.tf as well it's all about the declaration now we'll see whether this uh, is successfully but of course um, i have seen it right now spark sub is running so wherever uh, m is there it is updated as male wherever f is there it is updated as female okay this is how uh, we can uh, uh, do uh, we can handle the broadcast variable okay now this is how the broadcast will works now the another technique is by key operation so shuffles are heavy operations which consumes a lot of memory high shuffling may gives rise to an out of memory error to avoid such error the user can increase the level of errorism for example when it turns to key right group by key combine by key reduce by key so all the key operations right it will cause the shuffle so it will be the complex uh, operations so basically we will generally by default we will say right reduce by key is uh, better performance when it turns to group by the reason behind is if we look at it here right before sending the network right uh, before uh, shuffling uh, reduce by key what it does it all the keys right it is uh, calculating see a1 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 is repeated right so a2 is calculated right okay so here a1 b1 is here a1 a1 b1 b1 a, because this is combined here itself a2 b2 here a3 b3 and so key level come it, it was already combined and it is it sends through the network so here it is a6 and b6 it is calculated whereas group by key what it is happening here the uh, it is not combining based on the key value pairs so after sending through network here it is the it is data is combining here so that's where the difference comes because if it is not combined in the uh, key level key and value pairs here it, it was transferred through network right uh, there could be a problem of chance in getting a out of memory error as it is as shown here so that is the challenge uh, when we are using the key operations so that's where basically the reduce by key is faster when it turns to group by key okay so that's all for today's guys uh, uh, so i will come up with uh, one more uh, session for uh, optimization for the leftover uh, if you really like this uh, video please do subscribe share and uh, like it